Welcome, everyone, to the program EdTech Mondays Nigeria, brought to you by the MasterCard Foundation in partnership with Co Creation Hub Limited. The EdTech Mondays is a platform to facilitate critical conversations on the use of technology for teaching and learning by bringing together key stakeholders, including policymakers, ed tech entrepreneurs, teachers, and parents. I thank you all for joining us today on this second edition of the show. My name is Joyce Daniels, and I'm glad to be your host. This week, our topic is DG Learning. Can education technology expand access to education? I'll tell you a thing or two. The last two decades have been marked by incredible improvements in access to basic education with enrollment rates more than doubling and reaching near universality. Since the year 2000, the number of African children enrolled in primary school has increased from 60 million to 150 million. Yet, growth in access to education has far outpaced improvements in learning outcomes, which still lag far behind with children often operating well below grade level. This phenomenon was dubbed the learning crisis by the World Bank in 2019. And this issue is central to education in conversations today. In Nigeria, results of different learning assessment surveys at basic level conducted between 1996 and 2016, not only indicate low attainment in literacy and numeracy, but also indicates declining trends, sadly. For example, a survey conducted by the Education Partnership Center between September and November 2017 on 50,000 children in 1,080 communities by 1,440 volunteers revealed that approximately 76% of the children surveyed could not read at primary two story level. And approximately 82% of these children could not calculate a primary two level multiplication task, although 85% of these children were enrolled in schools. So the question now is, why are Nigerian children not learning as expected? It is widely accepted that most of the country's education and training programs suffer low quality teaching and learning, as well as inequalities and exclusion at all levels, even with substantial increase in the number of children with access to basic education, a large number still remain out of school. In this edition of EdTech Monday, we take time to explore why access to education and improvements in learning have been so elusive and how technology will play an important role in enabling inclusive access to learning across Nigeria. Our panelists today include Mr. Rudra Narayan Sahu, who presently works as education manager with UNICEF Nigeria. In addition to his engagement with UNICEF, he worked with government, corporate organizations and civil society organizations with over 20 years experience in India, Bangladesh, Nigeria, and Australia. Rudra's specialized skills are monitoring progress of learning, psychometrics analysis, evidence-based program planning, result-based monitoring, implementation with a focus to improve learning and outcomes of children. Welcome. Good to have you here with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Many thanks for having me. Thank you. Olubayo Adekompi is also here with us. He is an expert in innovation, strategy, ed tech, data science, and artificial intelligence. He combines over 20 years experience, including his experience as a C-level executive in a leading telecoms multinational which is a Nigerian edtech nonprofit, a solution-oriented edtech that leverages artificial intelligence, telecoms, and digital access to deliver learning to every community in Nigeria 
through a project called Learn at Home. Bayer is currently ranked number one on the Kegel Data Science Global Dojo project. He's also recognized as one of the top 50 data innovators in the world by the US-based Carinium Intelligence. He's the author of three books, The Future is Shared on Sharing Economy, Artificial Intelligence for Starters, and Beginner's Artificial Intelligence for Kids in Primary School. Bio, it's so good to have you here with us. Thank you. A great pleasure to join you today. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Joyce Daniels, social engineering practitioner, and I am honored to be your host here today and other episodes of EdTech Monday. Question will go to Mr. Rudra Sahu. Increasing access to primary school education has been one of the biggest successes for Africa in the last two decades. Given in Nigeria, primary school enrollment rates exceed 70%. Amazing. But in the last, we've realized that even though we have gotten more kids into schools, they are not necessarily learning. Why do you think this is? And how do we increase access to education for the millions that are still out of school? Thank you. Thank you so very much, Joyce, for this lovely question. And this is this is a real issue which concerns everyone in Nigeria. As you, as you know, uh, Nigeria has a tremendous opportunity in terms of human resources. Uh, why I'm saying this? Because 40% of this po of total population is under age 15. Good thing about education in Nigeria is that school enrollment is increasing and 5 million children added to the education system in the last seven years. But the vast majority of the children who are in schools are not learning the basic foundational literacy and numeracy skills. And, th th and this is a real worry. And the children, those who are in schools, are not being prepared for their life, for their future. Uh, and uh, at the same time, if we see the data or the other data to support this, uh, every year, nearly 6 million children enter into the primary grade one. But the, but the only 1 million children reach the JSS3, that is the junior secondary level three. And it's a range of factors that's, uh, that's affecting why children are not learning and not continuing learning that, that, that the regions are varies from region to region. But the prominent regions are geographical location, economic circumstances, gender, disability, low quality teaching, school disruption uh, due to the conflict, that prevent millions of children in continuing their learning and also quality learning opportunity. For instance, if you see only in the uh, north uh, eastern of Nigerian states of Bay, Adamawa, and Iwobe, out of 58,000 teachers, 28,000 teachers do not have the required teaching uh, degrees, uh, teaching uh, skills to teach the ch primary grade children. And then mostly the, the, the low quality of the learning uh, outcomes of the children is really one of the driving or the let's say one of the barriers is coming from the low quality teacher education or the poor quality of teacher preparation. So this is one of the primary reason why we are, who, the, the children of Nigeria are not acquiring the basic foundational learning and uh, numeracy skills. But at the same time, more than half of the Nigerian children and young people are on the wrong side of the digital divide. This is limiting to the same opportunity, to the same opportunity as their connected peers. Here, the cost of inaction will be very, very high. That means we have to act fast and we have to act collaboratively. What uh, UNICEF is currently doing, particularly to expanding the access, uh, access as well as the learning outcomes of the children, number one, UNICEF is uh, supporting Federal Ministry of Education in digitalizing the curriculum and instructional materials. And, and you know, it, it's a generational effect because once you digitalize all this material, irrespective of the location, the children can access and learn in their leisure time as well as in the school time. And, and these content materials, the digitalized material are open and the children, teacher, teacher educator, community stakeholder can access to those material. And the second, uh, the number two, uh, the area of innovation in uh, UNICEF is supporting is the deployment of learning passport. And, and it's, it's a very innovative one 
UNICEF in partnership with uh, my Le- learning what learning passport this is a learning passport okay UNICEF is supporting in a, a virtual uh, learning platform that we call learning passport in partnership with the Microsoft Cambridge education and in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Education uh, we are deploying we are deploying a learning passport for Nigeria uh, particularly targeting to reach out 25 million children by end of 2023. This learning passport actually is a virtual platform where children can access to the high quality learning materials, supplementary materials, as well as the guide, uh, teacher guidelines, the assessment materials. Uh, so, uh, and, and it is appropriate for both children in schools and children out of schools, targeting the cognitive skills, uh, the 21st century skills, uh, the transferable skills. So it's not just uh, children can, um, let's say, know something from this material, but they can apply their knowledge and skills in different life situations. So, so, so it's a holistic uh, platform that can support children both in schools and out of schools to define and engage with the de- engage and acquire different skill sets. Then the third aspect where UNICEF is supporting uh, is the capacity development of teacher and providing ICT infrastructural support to the state as well. So UNICEF is uh, supporting all 36 states and FCT in Nigeria in uh, establishing uh, ICT hubs and also training the key person so that they can publish ready uh, publish ready to use television and as well as radio material, as well as UNICEF is supporting uh, states as well as FCT in developing the capacity over 30,000 teachers for deployment of technology inside the classroom. And the fourth part I must uh, uh, mention here is the community, because you know the community uh, is key in these uh, initiatives. So UNICEF now is supporting five civil society organizations uh, to support children in accelerated, accelerated and catch up learning program because you know, during the, the school closure, the children lost two quarters of the learning and, and fall behind to catch up those children in the learning. So at the community level, uh, five CSOs are supporting nearly 1.6 million children uh, with a catch-up learning program, identifying the gaps in learning through diagnostic assessments and developing appropriate catch-up learning materials uh, through uh, in, by engaging community volunteers and also providing take-home learning materials. And it will support over 1.6 million children in few months. So these are the key initiatives uh, UNICEF is taking up to expand the access as well as improving the learning outcomes in this crisis situation as well as in the normal programming. Over, thank you so very much. Amazing. Thank you, Rudra. A survey by Chiaha et al. of 2013 explicitly studied the kind of e-learning facilities that students have access to. The percentage and extent students access these facilities, as well as the factors that hinder students from accessing e-learning facilities. The results revealed that about 42.9% of the students had access to e-learning facilities. Most students have access to only email accounts. And the factors hindering access to e-learning facilities include electricity, wahala, electricity, power supply, poor internet connection, amongst others. So Mr. Bayo, my question, in the absence of technology, is it possible to enable access to education to all the children in Nigeria? What is the most essential element of technology that forms the foundation to access education? Mr. Bayo. Thank you very much. Uh, I think there's some fundamentals that we need to uh, re-emphasize as we underscore what technology does in enabling learning delivery. First, the problem of access, I think, like my colleague said, um, if you look at the infrastructure available, you know, it's limited vis-a-vis the number of learners or those that intend to learn or those who are actually outside learning ecosystem who may want to learn. Uh, access is not uh, building, it's not brick and mortar. The same theorem that changed banking from what we used to know as, as brick and mortar uh, to something that you can do on your phone, you can do via a neighborhood kiosk, 
or you can do via ATM powered by solar is the same principle that access must be democratized in a way that anyone, anywhere, anyhow uh, can, you know, uh, can access learning. So three core things uh, that drives access-led edtech solution delivery uh, in a quest to drive what we call student-centered learning, where the child is at the core of learning delivery such that there is a reception, reflection, and of course, there's retention of what is being passed across. Technology must enable access where we make a lot of channels that are reflective of the reality of the child outside the forward of the school. So what that means is that the child is an area where uh, is a particular type of technology that is available. How do we use technology as a tool to serve that child within that context? The second is the area of simplification. Uh, technology enables vague abstract concepts to be made uh, into a tangible and relatable entity around the child. And of course, technology enables personalization where each child can grow on his or her own uh, beyond the traditional uh, you know, uh, route learning where all, ch all, the, all the children are first fed into a learning pattern. So in summary, I can say strongly that technology is an enabler and there are about five key elements of ed tech or education, education that technology can enable. First is in the concept of learning. Uh, learning must be interactive and engaging. Prior to now, we're all familiar with uh, one-way learning. Uh, technology can address that uh, part of the issue where I'm just a recipient. So learning is all about what the teacher dishes out. Uh, my ability to engage and provide feedback is missing. So uh, ed tech or education blender, uh, no, uh, technology blended with education allows for interactivity. The second thing is the context where I can make learning to be reflective of the reality of the child. I recall a story that uh, is a very popular story that was told about a boy uh, whose father is a trader, uh, whose teacher complained that he was not doing well in mathematics. Uh, so the teacher met the parent and said, oh, Mr. Your child is not doing well in mathematics. Uh, so the father asked, what is the problem? And the said, we asked him to do three plus four. Uh, your child cannot sum it up. So the father asked the boy, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to mention a name because it's related to a part of Nigeria. He mentioned the name of the boy. He said, okay, if I sell three oranges today and tomorrow I sell four oranges, how much have I sold? The boy answered without counting, seven oranges. Seven oranges. <laughs> what has happened? Context has changed. Learning has been localized to the reality of the child. And that's also speaking about customization. And of course, the power of adaptive learning where you can learn at your own pace and the content can reflect your demonstrated and validated competencies. And one key area of technology enablement is community. As many of us as education theories are familiar with social learning theory, we learn better through others, uh, collaborative learning, where the exchange and the fluidity of knowledge enhances corporate, uh, uh, corporate uh, flow of learning. And of course, it also drives some positive competitiveness that allow each child to learn. And this informs some of the things uh, we've done, uh, we learn at home, where we look at context of a child and ask ourselves a question, to what degree can we localize technology? Uh, we learn at home, uh, which is supported by Mastercard Foundation. We look at Nigeria, for example, uh, my colleague from UNICEF spoke about digital divide. 20% of all devices in Nigeria are smartphones, so which means that 80% are feature phones. So most kids in Nigeria, out of this 185 million mobile uh, subscription, are on 2G. So the question is, what can we do with 2G? 2G covers 92% of the population. So what can we do? So the first thing we did was to look at the traditional radio channel. How do we make radio more interactive by embedding SMS, which is like a free utility that every phone can do, irrespective of the nature of the phone. So all the 178 million phones in Nigeria can enable SMS make the SMS free, embed it into radio, such that as the teacher is teaching, the students are relating with the teacher. It is asking questions, the students are getting instant answers. So the old theorem of learn, evaluate feedback cycle is achieved even with a low level technology that's accessible by these kids. Of course, we also use IVR, you know, interactive voice responder, where you dial as if you are calling on a normal 2G network, 
and you are interacting where uh, as you call, you can be asked a question and you press one, two, three, like when you call a normal service center or a call center, the level of interaction has been developed into a learning framework that support our low income kids. So essentially I'm trying to demonstrate the fact that technology is as good as how we localize it. Technology is as good as how we make it to the student center. And that's why I always say education theory or learning theory must lead, education must be the slave, helping us to customize as much as possible. We went the extra mile to say, okay, what of USSD, which everybody uses? If I want to recharge, I do start this and this. So what of if we turn that into a quiz platform and any child and every child can use it as many times as possible? Of course, there's some learning content that cannot be done via USSD, which internet cannot enable in those communities. So what can we do? We also think about how do we disintermediate internet? What of if we have a content copying centers in our community where people can go with their phone, even feature phone, you know, people today have micro SD, they copy music from one person to another. So what if in every village in Nigeria, there's a, a learn at home MasterCard supported copying center where you can go and copy content that is reflective of your levels of uh, or your curriculum for that particular time. And you can learn at your own pace on a, on a, on a what they call palace of phone at your own pace as much as possible. So these are the principles that uh, demonstrate how we can push technology to indeed deliver access in a way that is personalized, customized, and reflective of the nature of the child. Two other things I will talk about is in the area of support. Generally, everybody will ask, if with all this, how can support be done in an area where there's light technology? Now, I'm sure many of us realize that during COVID, which is one of the things we experimented with, you know, uh, using a platform where you can take a picture of a problem and you can send it via what we call MMS to a teacher, the teacher solves it and send it back to you via low light data. So we do that as well. You know, that you take a picture of a problem, a teacher solves it and sends it to you. And of course, to even make this even more standardized, now we realize that we must create a system where this learning content, which are bespoke to local communities, are available to as many people as possible. And we realize that the biggest dynamic entity within the learning ecosystem in Nigeria are the NYC, that's National Youth Service Call members. They all have, 99% of them have got smartphones. They're in every community in Nigeria. And the interesting thing is that 90% of them end up being teachers. And I'm sure you know what I mean. So the question is, these are the guys that we can empower, support to become agents of driving digital content. So which means that while we will train the current teachers, we need to look at the low and give food. And that's what Lana Tom, a MasterCard funded project has done. That's what we coppers and, and use them as catalysts for delivering learning digitally, since they are more pervasive. And of course, uh, they also need to be told, uh, taught uh, the fundamental principle of learning so that they can enable learning ecosystem. So I would say that indeed technology uh, can support and, and uh, uh, provided in clear terms some of the key examples of areas where technology can indeed drive learning delivery and of course better education outcome. Thank you, Bayo. I am sure our listeners are being absolutely enlightened just like myself. Many times when we think of technology, we only think of the big things. Now you're saying we're using 2G and simple phones, what we might call touch light phone to get work done. It's amazing. We applaud you. And of course, we celebrate the MasterCard Foundation for committing highly to EdTech. And of course, bringing this show to you, EdTech Mondays, in partnership with the Co-Creation Hub Limited. I have one last question for I let you go today. What else do we think quality education should provide? Is there a role for technology in developing those other kinds of skills in our young people? Since the statistics are a lot about numeracy and literacy, how can we go beyond numeracy and literacy? Allow me go back to Rodra. Thank you so very much, uh, Joyce, for this question. And uh, it's, it's truly relevant in the present context because, you know, we should look beyond the foundational skills of learning like literacy and numeracy skills. And in the 21st century, you know, uh, we have to prepare the children so how they can use the knowledge in a real context. Okay, the Google knows everything, the why the child should know. That means we should uh, now providing children the opportunity to go beyond the root memorization. 
because if you see in the global perspective what is happening the manual jobs are shrinking and particularly the employers now are focusing on the skills where they can use their knowledge and skills in a certain context because the none of the employer is going to hire the children on the basis of what they know but on the basis of what they can do with what they know yeah what they can do to make this happen what we need to do that means we have to uh, transform our school system so that it it, it encourages children to acquire the critical thinking problem solving as well as creativity those are the 21st century skills that will we will be helpful for the uh, for the children to uh, to to develop their skill as well as contribute to the society in, in a larger goal number 1 then the second thing uh, we have to provide the better student the opportunity in our workforce first we have to transform the school system to inc- to uh, to inbuilt or instill those skills inside those children and when these children coming to the workforce we should give them the opportunity to be the part of this work- workforce number 2 number 3 we have to develop a enabling environment that means we have to bring in the modern modern age or cutting edge technology into and the Uh, new age technology in, into the work culture so that once the children are coming into the workforce they can contribute to the development or the nation nation building so that means it's not about just instilling the skills inside the children we have to work in a larger way so that and and in every aspect so that those skills nurture utilized as well as contribute back to the society so that which we should work in a larger way in that sense if we change our assessment system then automatically the teaching learning uh, process inside the classroom will teach definitely we need the every the, we need more trained teacher we have to train teacher that, that that's for sure but but this is also once we uh, focus more on our how we assess children how we framing our question how we uh, provide opportunity to children to ask question because when we unbind child's mind then uh, then those skills particularly problem solving the so creativity critical thinking team building team work that comes in okay so i think we we need to work on those areas to to provide it, uh, opportunity to children to acquiring those skills over thank you thank you very much rudra bio what do you think in addition to what further has mentioned i think my colleague has said it so well i think one thing i just want to add to it is the <laughs> fact that what technology or digital uh, when is blended perfectly with education has done is that it has made learning a lifestyle continuum it's continuous it's no longer about literacy or numeracy in is about your yeah it's no it's, it's about your everyday response to everything around you and that's what makes you a complete person learning must make people fit into the society not just fit into academic awards or fit into a uniform uh, that they wear to school and that is the bigger picture that the whole theorem of 21st century is driving for in how we build our children to be reflective of the world they will live in uh, there's a book i read some years ago Uh, which is literacy is not enough, you know, uh, by the crotchet, 21st century influences for the digital age. As uh, she spoke about four dimensions of uh, fluences, she called it fluences, not skills, uh, that the child must have, you know, at level of mastery to be ready for 21st century. Of course, uh, my colleague spoke to them, but I would just try to use that to summarize my talk. Number one is what we call solution fluency. Solution fluency, critical thinking, problem solving, being able to make sense out of you know what is happening around you if i know 3 plus 4 is equal to 7 and i have something outside 3 plus i cannot interpret it then there's no learning you know number 2 is information fluency ability to process large volume of information around me i can process information of pictures images context circumstance not just what is written on the board and that's why the dynamic immersive nature of experiential learning makes it very exciting where different questions come at different times which you know some of the works you also did at CC Hub also speak to the relearning project where is all digital the question if you answer this question the next one that comes is different from the other one that is information fluency the third is creativity fluency that is ability to make translation 
Because sometimes a teacher pushes something, the child must have ability to filter and process. You know, and the last is collaboration fluency, which is in the future, our ed tech learning mindset must drive or help our children to know how to work with others, learn with others, interpret with others, co-create with others, and more importantly, co-create with non-animate objects, co-create with machines. Because the whole concept of fourth industrial revolution yeah. or the future of work is that the world is not about you. So it's not about everything you have crammed, it's about everything you can relate and exchange with others. And the last thing I will talk about is the fact that those outcome-oriented thinking must shape how we train teachers. I love teachers, they are awesome people, you know, but the, the dynamics of what is obtainable now will require continuous self-development uh, such that, you know, we'll begin to talk about learning outcome-based capacity building that is driven by well-motivated teachers who understand the interplay of exper experiential learning in massive uh, connection and active experimentation uh, in driving learning that help these children to be useful to themselves and useful to the emerging society. Thank you. This is food for thought for me and for all our listeners, even as we continue to focus on the children in our space. We would love to hear from you listeners. Why are Nigerian children not learning as expected? Our Twitter handle is at CC underscore hub and the hashtag is EdTechMondaysNigeria. You can also send us a text or a WhatsApp message on 0703-165-0809. That is 0703-165-0809. You can also join our Telegram channel, which is EdTech Mondays Nigeria, and let us know what you think. Our most sincere thanks to our panelists for this week, Bio Adekombe. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's been a great time learning together. Thank you, Rudra Sahu. Thank you for your thank intervention. Thank you so very much. Thank, thank you so very much for having me. Thank you to all our listeners. We remind you to join in again. Same time, same station next month. My name is Joyce Daniels. Bye for now. 